You've now learned how to successfully crop an image and create it optimized for chat fuel, specifically for the gallery card. Next, I'm going to teach you how to add a buy button so you actually have a functional way for people to pay you. And similarly, how to set up Stripe payments so you can actually process these payments with Facebook Messenger. So here we go. Obviously, we're still on the same food block. So before we can do anything else, let's add a basic heading and let's say pizza. And I'm actually going to, in the future lessons, create different ways for people to add whatever toppings they like to the pizza. So I'm not going to add any subtitle or description or anything like that just yet. You know, typically I would do something like pick these toppings or for example, uh, for one pizza I could do, this is a pepperoni one, I could create another item here and say this is just cheese, etc. But I'm going to talk more about that in another video. So for now, the focus of this is just adding the buy button, making a functional payment system. So we have the basic pizza here, assuming this is some pizzeria that just sells one single pizza. So we're going to add a button and go over here to buy. And obviously right now we see this error message saying, you know, to enable payments, use the payment setup. We're going to do that in a second. So let's say for the whole price of this pizza, it is $15, not... 15 okay cool so we have $15 here and of course you can add taxes and everything like that unfortunately chat fuel right now doesn't have a way to dynamically add taxes or anything like that or shipping costs based on location there are workarounds but that won't be covered in this course so assuming you just have the basic price no tax or anything like that we're going to simply click off. So it's that simple to add the price. You now have an item and of course you're getting this error message saying you need to actually enable payments because if we test the bot here, you'll see that users can't actually complete the purchase at this point because we have no way to process that payment. So let's go to food. And obviously we see the pizza here. We see, oh, there's a buy button, cool. But if we click it, you see that it's asking us to set up a fallback URL, meaning that we would have to include some website link where people can actually perform the payment on a website because we can't process the payment just yet ourselves. So to fix that problem, let's go back into chat fuel. I'm gonna move this over so I don't accidentally go to the forums again. And let's go to the configure tab. So here, it'll take a second for this top part to load with the pages and scroll down. Now, keep in mind, you do have to be connected to a page, I believe, before you can enable payments. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're following along, you should already have your page connected, but just a, a side note. So now click Run Payment Wizard, and you have two options here. I have not used the native messenger payments just yet because there's an approval process required. And although with native messenger payments, I don't believe you are charged per transaction like you are with Stripe, Stripe is super quick and efficient and I highly recommend it. So for now, let's go to Stripe Worldwide Payments. And by the way, the difference here, as the name implies, Stripe is accessible worldwide. Anybody can use it. So if you're running an international business where you're getting orders from all over the world, this restaurant example isn't great because obviously that's very local, but say you sell pasta worldwide, then obviously you want to use Stripe as opposed to native messenger payments, which is only based in the US. So anyway, click set up Stripe payments and here you can add a URL with a customized terms and policies. I highly suggest this and consulting with a lawyer before you just use the default chat fuel policies, which you can easily do here. Um, that's probably fine if you're selling low ticket items, but if you're selling higher ticket items, you definitely want to create your own privacy policy in terms of service just to keep yourself per protected. But obviously consult with a lawyer on that. I'm not a legal expert. So continuing on, you have the merchant name here. So you could replace the name, for example, with your brand name. So let's say pizza restaurant instead. Obviously you could be more creative. And then the admin email for orders here is very important. So this needs to match the 
the address that you use when creating your Stripe account, okay? So this is very important. So if you create a Stripe account, if you're trying to connect a Stripe account and the Stripe account login information that you use, if you use a different email for that Stripe login than you use here, it won't work. So this is very important. So I'm gonna keep the email address that I have here the same. And now here's where you connect to Stripe. So if you have an existing account, you connect here. If you don't, it'll prompt you to create a new account. So you click connect Stripe. And now it'll prompt you here to create a new account and go through the process. Or you can alternatively click sign in here and it will prompt you with your login information. So I'm gonna sign into my account Again, remember that the email you enter here must match the admin email that you used in the previous screen. It'll authorize your account, then you can click done, and if everything goes well, you can see here that Stripe Worldwide Payments is enabled. At any time, if for whatever reason you need to disconnect, you can simply click disconnect here, but I wanna demo how this works before that happens. So click test this chatbot, Go back to the block that you've created the e-commerce product on. And then here you can simply click buy. And in the desktop version, this opens up in a separate tab on the mobile version of Messenger. It's really cool because it just pops up within Messenger and it doesn't take you or redirect you to an external site where users are likely to get distracted. So once all of this happens, you simply fill out this information, whatever information is required, hit pay. And then when you're done, a receipt will pop up if the user successfully completed the purchase and they'll see that displayed there. One more thing that I wanna show that's useful for e-commerce use cases is, let's go back to the food block. And what you can do is actually enable and disable certain information that you're collecting when a user is completing a purchase. So if, for example, you have this use case in a restaurant where you don't need a user's shipping address, for example, if it's just being delivered to the table, you can uncheck this shipping address box and you can probably uncheck phone too, maybe even name if necessary. And the advantage of unchecking these boxes that you don't need, yes, it would be more data from a marketing perspective and that might be useful, but also it's very important for conversion rates because obviously if you're making it easier for people to transact with you, you're not requiring a whole laundry list of data, they're gonna be more inclined to purchase what you're selling. So that's very important. In the next couple videos, I will be discussing user attributes and user attributes attached to the order, in addition to after purchase blocks, which are very effective for retargeting, and that's the use case for those. So I'll talk about those in the next couple of videos.